Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,479. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to look up bulk discount prices using VLOOKUP. Now, here's the question. How does selling price change when offering bulk discounts? I'm trying to make a pricing schedule for 1, 5, 10, 50, and so on. Well, the trick is, is to take these numbers, and notice there are gaps between the numbers. Not only that, but you always want to start the first category with 0. This first column has to be from biggest to smallest. But for each row, that number 10 will be understood by the VLOOKUP function as representing all of the units from 10 up to, and not including 50. 50 belongs to this category. So 10, 50, each one of these numbers is the lower limit for this category. Then you simply put the price in one of the subsequent columns. Now we can use any unit here to look through this first column, find a match, jump over, get the price, and bring it back. Now how does VLOOKUP know to get a 5 and get to this category? Well, it actually does something really lightning fast in terms of computers called a binary search. But as a metaphor, here's what VLOOKUP is going to do. It's going to look this number up, race through until it finds the first number bigger, and jump back. Then it knows that that's the row, and this will be the correct price. So let's see how to do this. Equals VL, those are the only two letters you have to type to get to VLOOKUP in the dropdown. Once you see it in bold, you hit the Tab key. Now there's four arguments for VLOOKUP. And it works just like we would do it manually. The lookup value. Well, if we were doing it manually, we'd have to look up the units and remember it, right? Well, VLOOKUP has to do that also. So it will look at the 5 and remember it, comma, to get to the next argument, table. I always remember what to put in table array argument because there's the word table. That means I need to show VLOOKUP where the table is. Just like we would know where the table is, VLOOKUP needs to know where the table is. Now, we're going to be looking up this 5, and there's gaps between the numbers. So we're doing something called approximate match. That first column has to be sorted smallest to biggest. And then any subsequent columns, those are potential items we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. Also, we do not need to include the column headers or field names at the top. Now we type a comma. The third argument is column index number. I always see the word call reminding me that it's column. I need to tell VLOOKUP which one of the columns, 1, 2, or 3, has the thing that I want to go and get and bring back to the cell. Now, normally, we humans, we would know to read the columns at the top and get the price. But VLOOKUP doesn't read the columns automatically, so we have to put the number 3 in column index to tell VLOOKUP to go to the third column. Now, comma, there's two types of VLOOKUP. Approximate match is what we're doing. That means it looks it up, races through, finds the first bigger one, and jumps back. That's how it knows which category or row. If we were looking up exact text, like a product name or an employee ID, we would use exact match. Now, that true and false, that doesn't mean the normal true, false, one, zero, like in most computer languages. Those two options just tell VLOOKUP what type of lookup to do. Now, it gets better. Since approximate match is so common, they made that the default. So we don't even have to put it in. I'm in a backspace. We completely leave that fourth argument off when we're doing approximate match lookup. Close parentheses and Enter. And look at that. It totally looked up the five, raced down, found the right row, went over to the third column, and got the price. If I change this to 51, Instantly, I better come over here and get the 1559. Now, VLOOKUP, this is approximate match. If I put a number less than the first number, like minus 1, which we wouldn't do for units, it's going to give you an NA. So below the lower limit, 
doesn't work. However, if someone buys 150, it has no problem. It races through, always trying to find the first one bigger. When it can't find a bigger one, it knows to stop at the last category and get the price. Now I want to hit F2. Notice we typed a 3 right there. Now I want to try this again, equals VL tab. I'm going to use my left arrow to get the lookup value. Comma, table, I'm going to highlight the three columns. Comma, if I put a 3 here, it knows to go to the third column. And since we're doing approximate match, I do not put anything in for that last argument. Close parentheses and Enter. But watch what happens. What if we decide this lookup table should also have a cost? I'm going to highlight the last column, point to the edge. That's called a move cursor. And by the way, when I move this, I want you to notice internally inside the formula, I hit F2 to put it in edit mode. Of course, because we moved it, the range of cells new to update. But what's happening? If I put a cost here, and then I put whatever cost I had, I'm just going to put 1 there. That's not correct. So F2. If we're using VLOOKUP and we hard code the third column in and our table changes, which happens from time to time, that's not a good method. So instead of doing that, I want to force VLOOKUP to act like us humans, to look at the name of the column right above it, go through the column headers, and always know to go to the correct column that's named price. In order to do that, we have to learn about a second function, and it's a lookup function. It's called match. Now, match is a lookup function. We're going to look up not the 5, but the word price. Because remember, for VLOOKUP, how many columns are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, match will look up this word price, comma. And lookup array, that has to be a one-way array, either horizontal or vertical. It can't be a table like we put into VLOOKUP. Match is programmed to try and find price in this range right here. And when it finds it, it says what relative position it is in the list. For this set of words, it is 1, 2, 3. It's in the fourth position. So that's what match will return. Now, comma, we have three options for different types of lookup for match. The one we want is exact match. Notice, match uses a 0. VLOOKUP wanted to use a false. And so I'm going to double click that 0. We're telling match, please find exactly the characters P, R, I, C, E. So when I close parentheses and Control Enter, it found a 4. If I change this to cost, Notice, match delivers exactly the correct column for VLOOKUP. Now I'm going to Control-Z to undo that and leave that price. And I'm going to copy this in edit mode without the equal sign. Control-C, Enter, Enter, F2 to put it in edit mode. And right there, I'm highlighting the 3. I do not have to hit the Delete key. I just paste it with Control-V. Notice we have nested a function inside of VLOOKUP. There's VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP's job is to return the correct price. Match's job is to return for the word price the relative position, which happens to be the perfect thing for column index number. Now when I Control Enter, it's looking up the correct price. If I change this to 51, it totally gets the correct price. And if I change this to cost, when I hit Enter, it totally gets the correct cost. Now, actually, I should put equals this divided by 2. We'll say we use keystone. That means exactly doubling the cost. So now we can see it's got the correct cost, even though it's got number formatting there. If I increase the decimals, you'll see that it's getting exactly the correct number. So in this video, we saw how to look up bulk discount prices, first column from smallest to biggest. VLOOKUP will understand the gaps in this. VLOOKUP, 
F2, we can hard code the third column, and VLOOKUP will go and get the price. But if we ever change our table, we want a more automatic method. So we saw the match function to find the relative position of an item in a list. And then we put match right into column index number. Then VLOOKUP saw the column number and went and got the correct price or cost, depending on what we put there, for 51 units. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video where we'll see a similar look up bulk discount prices, but there'll be a different bulk units and price for each one of the different products. All right, we'll see you next video.